Hey YouTube, this is Southern Prepper One. I want to talk about uh, a comment was made. A guy said, "Why are you showing everything you got? Aren't you afraid of people coming when they have nothing? Uh, when the the takers will come because you have it?" And, and what I've shown in the last week was what a fence up front, a postal delivery box or a package delivery box, uh, how to repair some hoses and some white tanks. Now in my area, everybody has white tanks. Um, it's just a common thing. I mean, I know guys with 2,000 gallon water tanks. I know a guy with two 2,000 gallon water tanks, 1,600 gallon tanks. It's unbelievable in my area because I live in an area that has a lot of preppers. If you live in the suburbs, if you live in an area that people aren't, I don't want to call them Democrats, I don't want to call them liberals, I don't, I'll call them non self reliant people. If you live in that environment, um, to survive an EMP or worst case, you're not going to. Uh, I mean, you can prepare all you want, but you're just going to be prepping uh, for someone to take your stuff. That's just the bottom line. Just because of your location, it's not that you're not doing it right, you're putting back what you need to put back. Uh, a worst case EMP event, um, a total collapse of society, you're not going to make it. It's Now, get granted, a few of you are. But overall, preppers aren't going to make it. If you got a six month supply of food, but you live around you know, thousands upon thousands of people within a mile because of the city you live in or the suburbs, it's just harder for you. I'm not trying to discourage you. And what I'm trying to do is encourage you to find a bug out location, um, a, a, a relative, uh, someone that you can form a, a group with that you can go to their house. That's the only way to survive. Um, but what I want to talk about is marauders. People afraid that, hey, you're showing too much on YouTube. I, I show nothing on YouTube. Um, nothing compared to what the plan is. I live in an area that is very rural, very conservative, uh, very self-reliant. The, the Union Army couldn't conquer this area. Uh, the, it's called the Dark Corners. It's, it was ungovernable by the Union Army because of the terrain. There's mountains, there's hills, there's little valleys. The terrain is rough. Now it's not like the Rocky Mountains, that's extremely rough. But it's, it's where you could use the terrain in your favor, um, but it's very hard for an opposing force uh, to, to quell any insurrection. That's just the bottom line. The terrain, if you live in Florida on flat ground, it's gonna be very easy, uh, be it a government force with tanks, armored vehicles, to very low chance of a guerrilla warfare. Very low chance. Terrain is what gives you the advantage. Look at Afghanistan. So what I want to talk about is the worst case. This isn't a Great Depression where you know you're low on cash and you're you're trying to grow vegetables in your backyard and you're helping your neighbor. This is an EMP event, a, a total collapse. What are you going to do? Why am I not worried about marauders right now? As it goes into the collapse, I will be worried about it, but that's why I have a plan. Right now, I live in an area that I have tons of preppers, tons of preppers, un unbelievable amount of people that are preppers, and then a huge number of people that don't call themselves preppers, but are preppers. They got a wood stove, they got a garden, they have water, uh, water tanks to water their garden. Now, a lot of them have them because we had that fire a few years ago. So, a lot of proactive people that don't want a handout from the government or don't want to get help from someone. They'd rather do it themselves, uh, priority number one. So I live in that environment. If you do not live in that environment, your chances of surviving the worst case is high. And there's nothing you can do about it unless you move or you get someplace to go. And you can get there be before it really, really gets bad. And that will probably mean most of your survival supplies, 80% of them, stored at another location, not your house because you might not be able to transport it. I could never transport my survival equipment and gear. I would need a semi truck with a trailer. So you have to have your stuff prepositioned. Only way to survive. I, I'm tired of uh, you know talking to people that think they're gonna survive it because they got six months of mountain house and a few AR-15s in the closet and, and they got 5,000 rounds of ammo but they're surrounded by thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people and they don't have a group because they're even afraid to put the American flag out front. They say, well, it's, it's a very liberal area. I, I don't want people to know that I voted for Trump. I, I talk to them all the time. So you got to have a plan. But my plan, and this is just my plan, 
what is my plan? I am surrounded by good folks. Um, I could make a call right now, and it's not because I set this up. It's because I live around so many good people that can see the need for a community to be strong. I know so many people that don't know each other because we don't want it that way. Uh, a lot of people are private, but they're willing to talk to me. I go places in our community, uh, go to the nearest town or another town, and people say, hey, you're Southern Prepper 1. And they say, I'm a prepper. I watch all your videos. And, and then I, ask, I can ask them one or two questions, and I know if they're diehard preppers. Um, you know, I, I can anything about my last video, and they'll, oh, they already, they've already seen it. So that, to me, tells them a lot. And I get so many phone um, numbers given to me. They tell me where they live because people realize it's going to take community. It's going to take having contacts. Don't be afraid, oh, I don't want someone to know I'm a prepper. If you live in a liberal, non-self-reliant area, yeah, you have to be quiet. I don't have to be quiet. My strength is developing a community. Is Every person I know, it's sort of like this. If I meet that one person here and he knows five people I don't know, all of a sudden my network has just expanded by six people. That's what you need to do. But what am I doing? We could probably raise 50 men within an hour. It's not because I did it. No, not no way. I was a part of that, but because of all these good people I live around, we can make a call in one hour. I have 50 men armed to the teeth, ready to defend freedom, ready to defend the community. Give it a give it a day, we could have more. Give it a, two days, we could have more. But my plan is, I'm not worried about the marauders 24 hours after an EMP, not at all. But our plan is this: if this is our community. And we got all these preppers all over our community. The first 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, we're all going to be fine. We're communicating with each other and we're working things out. But I'm not worried about the marauders then. What I'm worried about the marauders further in. Because it would be crazy for someone to say, oh, Dave lives over there and he's got food. Yeah, Dave has food over there, but Dave's going to have multiple families at his location, armed to the teeth. Dave has neighbors in every direction touching me all over the place that are my friends, that I would risk my life to protect their house. Because guess what? If their house is in danger, my house is in danger five minutes later. So the connection of people working together. So at the start of the collapse, I will be communicating with these people, making sure they're secure. After that, then I have to worry. Then I have to be prepared to protect my whole community. So you do what you need to do at your retreat. You work on your perimeter. Then you have a plan. I have a perimeter. Can I increase the security of my perimeter? I, and I can. I have additional barbed wire, uh, lots of T-posts. Uh, lots of fence staples and so on and so on and so on so i can increase my security here but that's not the answer the answer i have to do to secure my community from marauders further on is increase my whole community security and you can have it you know one mile away from your house i, I need it five miles away from my house because guess what within that five miles i got tons of preppers i know and guess what this prepper I know, he knows three preppers near him that I don't know. So after the initial collapse, we're going to be coordinating with these people I know, many, many, many of them, and they're going to be coordinating with these people they know. I don't need to know these people. I don't want to know those people. I know enough people. I don't need to know them. I just need to know, hey, this guy I trust my life to. And he's got three families near him that he trusts his life to. We have to develop a plan. So security doesn't end, you know, 72 hours after the collapse. You got all your fencing up. You, you, you dug a couple foxholes. You got some sandbags filled. Hey, we're good. No, it's just beginning. That is the point where you have to look at, hey, this is sort of like a, a, a base, a patrol base. A fob, maybe not as big, but it's it's like a strong point you have in a foreign country. Yes, you immediately get on the ground and, and you sandbag it. You uh, concertina wire goes up. Uh, you clear fields of fire. Um, you communicate with other strong points around you, 
And then you get on the phone and you get the engineers and say, hey man, can I have the engineers for a day? I need some HESCO baskets put in. I need a, a ditch dug here. And hopefully they come and do that for you. And that's what we need to think about. Each retreat, each prepper has as property secured as possible. Then if you want to survive the worst case where they estimate EMP would take out 90% of America, you have to think community. You have to think, okay, how can I secure my community? Because you're going to have people coming in here and at first they're going to be just hungry people looking for food. Then eventually they're going to be organized hungry people looking for food. And they could be very organized because they're realizing, hey, we need food and they've stripped everybody else that's outside the community that's not a prepper. That's who are going to be worried about it after the collapse. They're going to have to worry about their security. So for a group of people to come after a, a, a prepper retreat is silly when there's other houses farther away that have you will provide little or no resistance to get ransacked. So that is what I have to do. That is why I urge you, if you can afford it, buy 20 of the Beifeng radios, 20 of just the FMRS radios, get them programmed, get them set. You can then take those radios because hopefully all the preppers in your prepper network and, and this guy might have told these guys, hey, get a radio. You can take those radios and put them out there. You're going to program a certain way. All your frequencies that your main group don't, that you use aren't going to be on that radio. So I'm not worried about Marauders 24, 48, 72, four days where I live. Not even close. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about a month after there's no food in the supermarket. That's, but that is the time as, as every day you have after you secure your individual house, your individual retreat, you gotta be working with people to coming up with a, the defensive plan. I've done it overseas. Um, you, you look at the map, you look at uh, areas where people will easily come in, major roads. Hopefully you live where I live and you don't really have a lot of major roads. Uh, you have a low population density, which can hurt you because you don't have enough people to protect everything. But where I am, there's enough people. People that are not preppers that live in my community right now aren't thinking this at all. And I don't want them to think it. So you think it for them. And, and you come up now with as much pre-planning as you can do. How can I secure my community? You might be in a subdivision that is very self-reliant a lot of conservatives there so that's your community you know and start small it might be right now it's just my house and my 15 20 neighbors around me then after that you worry about 50 neighbors around you then you move out a mile or two miles three miles because the more area you can expand that security protection around your house will protect your house better it will also give you more time to react if a force comes against you you're a little safer but you have to remember this if you're in that community you can't hide in your house when a threat comes to your community and say ah the, those poor suckers on the north side of the community are getting hit pretty hard sucks to be them because after they hit the north side they're going to come through your community and eventually you're going to get hit so you need to look at it like hey when it's game time, the whole community's in. The whole community has to protect. You just can't say, ah, Northside is getting hit pretty hard. I hope they make it. If you want to survive, you have to go help them. You have to provide support to them. Uh, it, it might not be moving every able-bodied man from your individual retreat or from your, your street. It might say, hey, we can send three guys and we can send an additional 500 rounds of ammunition to go help that. A lot of you are thinking, dude, what are you talking about? I, I don't even know the names of my neighbors. And, and that's what I'm trying to say. If you don't know your neighbors and you live in a suburbs, you live in a city, you're not going to make it. Now, if you have a very, very, very strong leader that has great leadership skills and he has the knowledge to back it up, he, he was a colonel in the infantry, he was a sergeant major in the infantry, uh, he's well trained and his leadership can organize that group quickly and he has the Knowledge. I've made a lot of guys that are leaders. They have no no infantry knowledge. They have no idea how to set up a security of a, a large community, but they can lead. That's that's half the battle. If you can find someone with some tactical ability, but 
is not really a leader to get out there, but he can definitely, hey, hey, we need to do this, this, and this. And he doesn't want to be a leader in the sense of getting all these people organized. You can team up with that person. And in a pinch, you could defend a community uh, with not much time. I don't want to be in that position. It, it, it sucks to be overseas and you go into a compound somewhere with Iraq, Afghanistan, wherever you are, and you got to mount a quick defense. I'd rather be in there for four days so I can really get a defense going. So I'm not worried. Very short term of marauders. And every day I have to work with my community and non preppers is going to strengthen me. Hopefully, in my area, a non prepper would say, Holy cow, there is no food at the grocery store. There's no chance you know of 911 coming yeah what do you have going and then you just grab the notebook and flip it out and say hey we need to control these five intersections we need to put a watch on here we might need to block these two roads off if you have a plan already people are more inclined if you're a good leader and you have the tech proficiency and know what you're doing if you don't know what you're doing, tell people, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. I, we need to find some guy that retired from the military. We need to find some guy uh, that knows what he's doing, that went to ranger school, that can teach us, to show us. I hope this helps. I hope I didn't panic you because you're in the suburbs and you got your wise food and your two guns in the closet and you think you're going to survive. You're not. So you're, what you need to do, you've done everything you can at your suburb, suburban house and you can't move i understand that try to find that relative try to find that friend that's a prepper that you can say hey i'm all in at your location because that person wants that shoot if, if a few extra families showed up here yeah they might be living in tents but guess what it just increased my security if they if they can bring what they need to the party it's a win for me hope i haven't discouraged you secure your location and then you better be ready to secure your community because the marauders will eat you up in a month after the collapse thanks for watching